Hello everyone, you are watching the channel Incredible Facts. Artillery has always played a significant role in any given battle, shaping the battlefield with enormous firepower. Among many models setting the precedent in this direction, there is really a marvel of engineering precision. The Panzer Habitza 2000. With its great range, high firepower combined with advanced technology, this self-propelled artillery had been recognized as one of the greatest field weapons in history. In this video, we are going to look more precisely at what makes the PZH-2000 so special. Development of the PZH-2000 began with the defeat of the SP-70 project. This was a joint undertaking by Germany, the UK, and Italy to construct a new 155mm self-propelled artillery system. Its defeat catalyzed Germany into developing something on its own. Out of that came the final form, the BZH-2000, which was also intended to substitute all outdated systems. In the Bundeswehr, right from the beginning, the accent had been placed on firepower and automization. The accent had been placed on firepower and automatization, spelling out requirements for a 52 caliber gun barrel that could achieve the greatest range and a front-mounted powertrain for optimum crew and ammunition location. So work began in the mid-1970s. It was decided that the development of the new artillery would be carried out by two competing consortiums to stimulate innovation. The Southern Consortium, which included Borsche, Krauss Maffei, and Rheinmetall, prioritized mobility by using as many components as possible from the main battle tank, the Leopard II. In contrast, the North Consortium, which obviously included Wegman and Rheinmetall, focused on economy and ultimately chose a chassis derived from the Leopard I. The winner was the North, which had a better artillery design. Wegman was the main contractor for the turret and final assembly, and MAC Guillaume Bayard supplied the chassis. Four prototypes had been built between 1991 and 1993, followed by a broad test program aimed at proving the performance of the howitzer in a great number of different conditions. The results were good. The new artillery indeed could fire three rounds in less than 10 seconds and in burst mode fire of up to 20 rounds in just over two minutes. Tests in sub-zero temperatures in Canada and in the hot deserts of Arizona showed the same excellent results. In 1996, the Bundeswehr ordered 185 units. The PCH-2000 thus became the standard artillery piece of the German armed forces. The heart of the system is a Rheinmetall-designed 155mm L-52 gun. The 8-meter-long barrel allows this system to attain extraordinary ranges, well over 18.6 miles or 30 kilometers with standard NATO ammunition and as much as 24.8 miles or 40 kilometers with specialized projectiles. Carrying a load of 60 shells and 228 modular propellant charges, the advanced autoloader can sustain rates of fire higher than most modern systems. One of the most obvious features of the PZH-2000 is the sophisticated fire control system integrated with the Adler Tactical Artillery Control System. This digital architecture ensures a very fast target acquisition and precise hit. It also has a multiple round simulations impact or just MRSI function, which allows multiple rounds to be fired from one gun on different trajectories to ensure that they hit the target simultaneously, which completely changes the dynamics of war. The crew of the artillery traditionally consists of five people, a commander, a driver, a gunner, and two loaders, although it is designed to operate with a minimum crew of three. Its design became highly automated in the end of the day. The commander's task includes supervising operations, communicating with other units, and initiating the fire sequence. The gunner is responsible for aiming and maintenance, while the loaders perform ammunition and systems readiness duties. The driver is located in the right front compartment and performs all control over the movement of the vehicle and routine maintenance of the engine. This automation is also carried over to the loading system, where a complex series of systems ensure that the projectiles are selected, loaded, and fired, all with minimal human intervention, and keep the whole system running. Such tools reduce crew fatigue and increase the system's efficiency during prolonged combat operations. Since its entry into service, this self-propelled artillery system has proven itself in a variety of operating environments, from sub-zero temperatures to scorching deserts. It is also used by NATO allies, including Italy, the Netherlands, and Greece, and by prominent non-NATO operators such as Qatar and Croatia, and more recently, Ukraine. 
The PZH2000 has attracted the most attention in the last few years when deliveries began to Ukraine, which is fighting Russian aggression. Very effective on the battlefield, it has given Ukrainian troops a much longer range and higher accuracy than many enemy systems. Ukrainian crews, who received intensive training by the German experts, immediately adopted its capabilities, using the rapid deployment and striking power of the howitzer to disrupt enemy operations. What's more, the PZH-2000 is designed with adaptability in mind, with its modular structure ensuring its long-term relevance in changing combat environments. Regarding the modularity allowing such upgrades, with new long-range ammunition and precision-guided projectors, currently under development by Rheinmetall, it will increase its firepower. Furthermore, the system is fully adjusted to modern network-centric warfare in support of counter-battery radars and reconnaissance drones for seamless coordination on the battlefield. Besides its adaptability, the PZH-2000 is specially fabricated to be survivable in high-intensity combat. The turrets and hull are armored to withstand small arms fire and shrapnel, and the reduced silhouette reduces its chances of being detected by the adversary. Additionally, the auxiliary power unit enhances operational stealth, as it can fire and employ all electronic systems without firing up the main engine. Thus, both thermal and acoustic signatures will be extremely low. However, not everything is so rosy with the PZH-2000. At over 55 tons, it will create a major headache in many cases where there is no adequate infrastructure for strategic mobility. The complexity of the system means very long training and maintenance, which may make it difficult to fully use the system during prolonged combat operations. In addition, the PCH-2000 is controversial due to its cost at the time of purchase and the cost of its operation. Such a complex platform may also be beyond the reach of smaller countries or those with smaller defense budgets. This inevitably forces countries to look for other systems or rely on foreign partnerships for artillery support. The PCH-2000 has set the standard for most modern self-propelled artillery systems and shaped the development of other systems. Its focus on instantaneous automation, accuracy, and high rate of fire has raised expectations for artillery on the modern battlefield. Many countries, such as South Korea and Turkey, have learned from this experience and integrated its ideas into their own designs, such as the K-9 Thunder and T-155 Fortina. The PCH-2000 is still considered a testament to technology superiority and strategy. Its deployment in Ukraine underscores that heavy artillery remains relevant in theater, despite the proliferation of precision ammunitions and drones. But what is common or different with US M109 Howitzer, which is also in service with Germany? The M109 Paladin has been one of the most significant of self-propelled artillery systems for decades, known and utilized for its flexibility and reliability. It has a maximum range of 15 to 18.6 miles, or 24 to 30 kilometers, with a 39 caliber 155 millimeter gun, depending on the type of ammunition used. The PCH-2000 reaches beyond 24.8 miles, or 40 kilometers, using advanced shells. One of the strong points of the Paladin is simplicity. A manually operated loading system means that it's relatively easy to train crews and maintain it in the field a key point for more than 40 countries that have bought it. The Paladin also is smaller and lighter than the PCH-2000, enhancing its tactical mobility, especially in areas with poor infrastructure. Upgrades to the M109 series, for example the M109A6 and A7, have enhanced this artillery system in fire control, survivability, and mobility. With these improvements, though, Paladin would still be outmatched by the advanced automation, MRSI capability, and digital integration of the PZH-2000. This ultimately makes the German system more effective during high-intensity, long-range engagements, where both precision and volume of fire are of utmost importance. The M109 can best be described relative to the PZH-2000 as cost-effective and battle-proven for those militaries that place a premium on operational simplicity, low cost, and adaptability over advanced technology. The PZH-2000 is incomparable in range, automation, and firepower, but the M109 continues to show relevance for a number of diverse mission requirements based on its reliability and flexibility. But for better or for worse, another development is already on the horizon. The new RCH-155, which could further revolutionize the world of self-propelled artillery. Now the first units are on their way to the war in Ukraine, where they will be able to show whether they can become a full-fledged replacement for the Panzerhaubitze 2000 
or whether it's too early for that. What are your thoughts on the PZH2000? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos straight to your notifications.